Hello, nice to see you again. I'm the Reverend Howard Schnarr, the Vicar of Christ the Lord Church, Broadfield. And I've been asked to do a video looking at the issue of anxiety. It's something that I've come across uh, over a number of years in pastoral ministry. And of course all of us have experienced anxiety on one level or another, perhaps on a spectrum, and it seems to affect some people more than others. It is a huge subject. And what I want to do is look at anxiety today is not cover things like vophobias, um, but just look at a apprehension, being apprehensive. Um, some seem to experience it more than others. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about those feelings of uneasiness or being worried or dread even. And in the pace of modern life with all its stresses, it is something that can escalate quite quickly, become very intense uh, to the point of overwhelming. And of course it's very easy as Christians to say, don't worry. Uh, if you read the Sermon on the Mount, it will say, you know, do not be worried about these things. Or you might read 1 Peter, cast your anxiety unto the Lord or in Psalms 55, etc. Uh, but of course we all know in reality it's very hard just to switch worry off like you would do with an electric light bulb. If we look to the New Testament, let's take St Paul, he said that he wasn't worried about being beaten or shipwrecked uh, for the sake of the Gospel. And yet he does also talk of an anxiety for the church's welfare. But I think there's a this difference. One was uh, an anxiety out of worry, what could possibly happen, and the other was out of a genuine concern. And I think we could say the same for Timothy as well. He had a genuine concern, a genuine anxiety for the welfare of the church. Uh, but this was different from a worry of uh, being uh, uneasy and uh, dreading what might possibly happen. So in saying that you can't just switch worrying off like a light bulb, where can we go forward? And for me, I look to the epistles and I want to uh, share a bit from the uh, letter to the Philippi, uh, Paul's letter to Phil the Philippi uh, church, uh, Philippians 4. Uh, Philippians 4 is a well-known chapter in the Bible. Of course originally uh, St Paul is writing to the church there to thank them for the gift and the support that they've offered. So I'm using the New International Version Bible. So yeah, Philippians 4 which is the close of the book, the last chapter of this, this letter. Verse 4 it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. There is something about trying to rejoice in the Lord. You know St Paul was in prison at the moment and you would have thought the church would have write a letter to, written a letter to him saying, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. But no, he says to them, rejoice in the Lord. And in case you missed it again, I'll write it again. Rejoice. It's almost like underlining it with a highlighter pen. Rejoice in the Lord. Verse 4. And then verse 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. God isn't distant. He isn't far as much as we might feel at times. And then verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but every, in every situation be prayerful and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. So the two words I want to pick up from this verse is being prayerful and thankful. I used to visit an old lady in a care home who always said to me, count your blessings day by day and see what the Lord can do. Uh, a song that she knew well. Uh, I even bought her the uh, Harry Seacombe uh, CD with that, that song on it. But there's a lot to be said for that. Count your blessings day by day and see what the Lord can do. And then I'll jump to verse 8. It says this, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, 
whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent to your praiseworthy, think about such things. And so I think what I'd want to say as I close now really is to dwell on the positive and what the Lord can do for us. It's very easy. We might think as we go into church this morning, I might think, what well, about all these people that are not here and could get worried about that? And maybe there is something about having not worrying but having a godly concern, as we heard from Paul. But on the other hand, actually to thank God for those that are there and being challenged and comforted by God's word. So I'll just leave you with that, these little thoughts and hope they're helpful. But yes, to use this pattern of Philippians 4, which is rejoicing, um, being gentleness, the Lord is near, not being anxious, but by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, and finally dwelling on the positive. Well, thank you for listening to me, and I hope that this was helpful. Good morning and welcome that they've offered. You should say what Bible you're using. Uh, so I'm using the New International Version Bible. 